I'm Dr Lisa Mason, uh, Principal of Ormiston Forge Academy. So we are doing Facebook Live to you today uh, because obviously under the current circumstances we're not going to be able to do our normal open events. I've got a team of people with me um, so as we go through uh, the talk um, that I'm going to be giving to you uh, we will be answering questions. So firstly to say um, we're delighted that you could join us today and thank you very much for, for signing up for our open events. Um, obviously, you know, we would normally have a very full programme of people coming in to visit us and actually looking around our school and really give us the opportunity to show off what we're good at. Um, but the biggest thing for us at the moment is safety for both our students, for our staff and our community. Um, so we're not able to do that. So we've got a series of open events, um, e virtual events that we are going to be doing for you, um, which we've got the, the opportunity to sign up for. Um, and I'd really urge you to do that because there's lots of exciting stuff that's going to be going on. In terms of my history here, I'd just like to talk to you a bit about the Academy, but also me. Um, I've been principal now, this is going into my second year, uh, but I've actually been here for the last 17 years. I started off here as a trainee teacher. Now, I think that in itself, the fact I've been here so long and a number of other staff have been here so long as well, speaks volumes about what the Academy is about. Um, it is about support, it's about companionship, it's about improvement for staff and for students and it's a very, very welcoming place to be and I can honestly say hand on heart that it's a place that, that just becomes part of you, it's what you're about. In terms of what is Forge, if somebody asks me uh, things that I'm most proud of with Forge and what really sort of represents Forge, um, I would say, first of all say Ofsted, we're not a box ticking academy, um, but the fact we've managed to get two successive goods uh, in Ofsted I think is really, really important for us and it's important for our community. Um, it ratifies all the excellent work that our staff and our students put in day in, day out. And I think those sort of judgments are really important for people to say. It just shows the good work that we do day in, day out. Secondly, the other thing I would say that's really important to us and something I'm extremely proud of is our destinations of our students. At the end of the day, we are an establishment that is creating rounded young people that have the opportunity to then go and succeed in whatever area of life they want to and be good citizens. And all of our students leave us going on to employment and education. And we've had some real highlights um, with our students. We've had uh, a student who went to Brown's University in America a couple of years ago to do physics uh, and got awarded a scholarship. Uh, we've had students go to Cambridge uh, and Oxford. Um, so, you know, we really um, managed to, to sort of push our more able students uh, in order to be able to, to achieve their goals. Um, but likely, similarly as well, we have other students who are achieving their goals all of the time at different um, areas and different vocations. Uh, and we're all extremely proud of every child who leaves us uh, and, and goes into whichever area that they want to go into. The other thing that we're really, really proud of, and I think sort of sets us apart from other acad academies, is our relationships with people and students. Um, I think, you know, our culture is about supporting one another. And I think that's really come to the fore during this lockdown period. Um, I think you know, parents have commented how well we've communicated with them and how supportive we've been. And, and that is us, and we are continuing to do that now through what is a very challenging period for every school, being able to remain open and have our students and our staff safe on site. So we are all about those relationships. Um, we're like a family, we talk about Forge family, and we're like any good family that has got high aspirations of, of everybody in the family. We want to really push them and to become the best versions of themselves. But we're also about challenge and we're about making sure that we've got high expectations. Um, but we're also about that, that love and that care and that support um, and giving children the opportunity and staff the opportunity to really come into their own, whatever their strengths and abilities might be. My advice for any prospective parents, any year six parents, is to really get involved in our open events. Um, I fully understand what you are going through and what a massive decision this is. Um, I've got two children myself. We had to go through this two years ago with my son and we are now going through it with my daughter. So I know how important these open events are. And it's even more important in this day and age when we're not able to go into schools to see what they're all about, 
that we do and lot, lots of investigating and really digging and, and getting under uh, the skin really of the school to understand what it's about. So I would urge you to look at other schools locally that you might be considering, find out what they can offer. Obviously, I'm going to tell you that we can offer a tremendous amount for our students. We're extremely proud of what we can do for students here. Um, but please take the opportunity to find out what we're about. Uh, we're doing an event on Thursday evening where you'll be able to see more of the school, you'll be able to see some of the staff, uh, and you'll be able to see some of the students as well and get their perspective on the academy. And I think that's really important. I think finding out from the students themselves as to what we're about it is crucial. And you know, if you know other parents as well, that are parents of students here, talk to them and find out what their experiences are. I think that's really, really important. So I'm going to ask Lisa now, who's with me uh, from the team, as to any questions that we might have, Lisa, that we can answer. Yes, yes, we've got Rebecca has asked about open days possibly being reinstated if restrictions are lifted. Okay, so I've already mentioned obviously that you know, the restrictions that we're on at the moment, safety is absolutely key. So we're not in a position at the moment to be able to not offer any visits into school. However, if the restrictions are lifted and that we feel that it is safe to do so, we'd be absolutely delighted to have people come round and for us to show them on a tour what we're all about. And that could happen during the school day. Uh, we'd, we'd get that communication out to you as to how we could make that work. But as I say, at the moment, we're not able to do so. And uh, will we be able to visit primaries to familiarise pupils with staff? Okay, so in terms of the primary visits, again, they're under the same restrictions that we're under. So we've got to, you know, we can't actually be going into other schools at this moment in time. You know, we've got to make sure that our bubbles, our year group bubbles and the school bubbles uh, remain sort of really solid. So we're not able to go into primary schools at this moment in time. Uh, but again, as soon as restrictions are lifted and primary schools welcome us in, we'd be more than happy to come in and, and let sort of students see, um, you know, who are the key people that are going to be working with them in year seven. And Hannah would like to know about transition and how that works normally for year six into seven. Okay, so um, obviously in terms of transition, uh, I can talk about how it would normally work, uh, but I can also talk about what we've done this year uh, when we were faced with the challenges that we couldn't have any students in. So under normal circumstances, we run, we run a three week transition program. So we have students in over a three week period, two days each week. Um, and during those six days, uh, we offer the full curriculum, so students get to see all of the subjects that we offer, even subjects that we offer at GCSE that we might not teach at Key Stage 3, just to familiarise themselves with them, such as business studies uh, and health and social care. Um, and that really gives them a flavour of what we're about as a school. Um, those six days then end in an induction evening. Uh, so that's when we invite parents in and parents can ask questions of us, again, meet the key staff and key stage three team who are going to be working with their children most closely. Um, this academic year, or last academic year, we weren't able to do that. Uh, obviously, we weren't able to have any additional children in the academy. Um, so what we did um, is that we, we did regular videos. Um, so again, it was sort of key staff in the, the Key Stage 3 team. Uh, there were letters as well from the form tutors and from children in Year 7. So there's a whole programme of events that we ran over a series of weeks that just enabled our new Year 7s to really get a feel for what we were about, even though they weren't able to actually come into the school. Now we've still got access to those, so if you do want to go onto our website, um, you'll be able to see those videos, look at the letters, and see how we ran transition, as I say, under very challenging circumstances. And how would the transition differ for SEND children? So for SEND children, uh, we offer additional days for them to come in and meet with Success Centre staff. So Success Centre is um, an integral part of our school, um, but it is an area of the school where students uh, can locate key workers uh, and get just additional support and have extra intervention for whatever their needs might be. So during those additional days, as well as the transition days, they will meet their key worker, um, the information that comes from primary school as to what a SEND child might need in terms of additional support will be discussed with both the student and the parents. So before the student arrives to us, um, both the student and the parents have got that assurance uh, that their needs will be met. Um, so if you have any questions about that and if you want more information about that, I would uh, say you could contact Mrs Taylor in the Success Centre, she's our senior leader for inclusion, um, or if you want to sort of private message us on Facebook, um, we can get her to contact you. Okay, and Nikki would like to know what support we would give for a child who has just had a, a dyslexia diagnosis. 
Okay, so in terms of dyslexia diagnoses, again, that would go through a success centre. Uh, we'd make sure that we've got a, um, a plan, an educational plan around that particular child, look at what type of support was needed, whether it was a reader, whether it be um, some you know, overlays for, for uh, work that they might need, um, or whether it would be a computer or a Chromebook that they might need to be able to uh, complete their work. So all of that would be discussed with the parents and the child um, as they were making that transition to us to, to address the needs of that child. Okay, and Rachel would like to know how do we set core subjects and recognise children that are high ability? Okay, so when children start with us in year seven, uh, we look at a range of data in terms of being able to set children. So we do set, they don't remain mixed ability for the whole of year seven. We try to set the core quite early on. So we look at SATS results, obviously if SATS is done, because obviously they weren't done uh, in the summer, but we look at SATS results, we look at teacher assessment, and we also do some baseline ass assessments within school. Um, so we, we look at the range of data. We also sort of get a feel for the children as to how they're coping and settling within school and think about what their needs might be uh, within their particular groups. So they will be set for all core subjects um, by October half term. That generally tends to be how we, how we run things here. Um, we are about giving every child the opportunity to achieve their best. So we're looking at stretching, challenging, yes, those more able children, but every child, that's what we're about, you know, teaching to the top and making sure every child has got the opportunity to access all aspects of the curriculum rather than sort of limit them. Okay, and Ian's son loves sport. What can we offer for PE? Okay, so we're very blessed. We've got a very, well, sort of kitted out sports hall. We've got a gym. We've also got an off-site um, uh, recreational area where we've got really lovely football pitches and, and sort of athletics track uh, just down the road. So uh, we, we are well blessed for, for facilities. Um, in terms of a range of, of, of sporting activities that we offer, um, it, you know, football, rugby, um, badminton, um, trampolining, uh, we've got some very successful teams as well that have achieved great successes last academic year. Uh, we've got brilliant football, a girls football team, um, so that's something we're extremely proud of. Um, so there's a number of opportunities that we've got um, in terms of, of sport. And what I would like to mention actually is our football scholarship in sixth form. Uh, we're very proud of having a sixth form here and what we regard here is, is you know, not just a five year journey from year seven to 11, students continue with us into sixth form and many of them do. So it's really a seven year journey when you come to Forge, which we are really proud that we've got. Um, the football scholarship is, is run by um, uh, ex-professional footballers, so qualified coaches. Um, students uh, do their studies alongside their footballing and also do fixtures uh, and, and part of a league. So that's something that we've done over the last couple of years and it just goes from strength to strength. And again, it is something that we are extremely proud of that we can offer our pupils. That's super. Thank you so much. Right. Okay. Have we got any comments or shout outs from the panel? Uh, I think we just say thank you to everybody that's right. watching okay. and, and we're really grateful for it. Okay, so yes, thank you for watching. Um, so I appreciate this isn't the normal way of doing open events, uh, but we are delighted for you to have joined us and spent some time actually sort of watching this. Um, and please just sign up for the events, uh, have a look at the website and if you've got any questions at all, please contact us. Thank you.